Sure. Here we are in the new episode of the our uh, live streaming series. Uh, today we're going to talk about microphones and the uh, most common uh, microphone uh, types, uh, usages, applications, and uh, pretty much uh, all 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 basic things that you need you need to know about microphones and. Uh, uh, Everything that you need to do to uh, understand before you go in uh, any uh, music shop and to start buying these things. Uh, I hope that everybody uh, can hear us loud and clear, and uh, you can always post in the chat uh, to let us know if you if you have any troubles. Uh, hey, short. Uh, so okay, uh, let's. Get on with it. We prepare. We have prepared pretty much all types of microphones that we could get our hands on, except for the ribbons. But I mean, those are pretty pretty rare in the. I mean, in the usage uh, and also uh, in availability. I pretty much don't know anyone who, anyone who has uh, at least one. So. Uh, I failed to get that one, but it doesn't matter. We will talk about it uh, nevertheless. Uh, before we get started, uh, uh, I'll just uh, give you a heads up. We'll talk about uh, types, uh, polar patterns, uh, usages, and we will also demonstrate a uh, few types of use, like uh, uh, miking acoustic guitar and uh, a guitar amplifier that is right here behind me. Uh, Boyan has some floor tom and some cymbals on the other side of the camera that he will bring in uh, when the time comes for that. So let's dig in. First thing that I want to show you is obviously uh, what are basic types of microphones that you can you will encounter. Now uh, people like to discuss this about this uh, endlessly. But basically, what I what I uh, what I separation that I use is like uh, there are basically three types. You have your dynamic microphones, condenser microphones, and ribbon microphones. Uh, main difference is in build. So uh, dynamic microphones are the most popular one is in my hand. It's Shure uh, SM57, and uh, it's brother or sister. <laughs> SM58. Uh, dynamic microphones are basically warriors of the studio and live use. Uh, they handle super high SPLs really well. Uh, they will they work on a simple principle of a, a movable induction coil suspended in a magnetic field. So they're they're really sturdy and able to withstand uh, high. SPLs from let's say guitar amp or the bass amp or the percussive instruments, drums, whatever whatever is loud and you need it mic'd, it's this. You will need this probably. This is the uh, some people call this industry standard, uh, but beside that uh, there's like five or six other microphones that are like you that you that you can find pretty much on any stage anywhere in the world. Uh, beside this one, uh, there's uh, Electro Voice uh, uh, RE20, Sennheiser MD421, uh, obviously SM7B. Uh, all all those variations are, are awesome, but this this is really the most common thing in, in every studio or in every stage uh, in the world. So uh, basically. Uh, that's that, that's pretty much what we can say about them. Uh, the main thing here is that SM57 is uh, most commonly used as in instrument in, in microphone, and let's say 58 uh, is used as a vocal mic, is like tight grip, close up vocal mic for live live stages and live applications. I mean, there are no written rules for this. You can use this whatever. In, in whatever way you find fit, and uh, it's just about listening. And we can demonstrate now uh, a bit of how it sounds when you apply this to a guitar amp. I will ask uh, 
any one of you to take that guitar and let's play a bit. I'll just move, mute my microphone for a second so we can uh, just hear this thing a bit. Okay. Let me know if you hear the guitar uh, uh, in the chat. Thanks. basic miking thing that you can ever do, you take a SM57, you place it in the right dead center of the uh, speaker on your guitar ca cabinet and you will get something like this. Of course, there are like dozen different ways that you can uh, use this miking technique and you can you can use the center. Most, most of the people will say, Oh, I'm using the second third of the uh, distance between the center and the edge of the speaker. Some people will put it um, within like 45 degrees angle. Uh, all of those, all those things are changing the sound, and you can you should just experiment with it and uh, make the most of it. Like if you like it on the center, use it like this. If you have more than one of these, you can have several in place and just blend those signals. It's like uh, endless, endless sea of possibilities with dynamic microphones and the miking of, let's say, app, app. Uh, maybe we can move that one maybe a bit on the side, just so people can hear the difference between the center and the side. hear this uh, on the internet but in my headphones it was pretty clear uh, once we started uh, getting further away from the center uh, sound was a bit less bright and uh, uh, it had more of that low mid and low uh, frequencies in, inside of it and that's the that's the uh, uh, beauty of it you can play with it you can blend several signals you can uh, use the same app and the same guitar with the same guitar player and just record it with two positions to get two completely different results. So it's about being playful there. Okay. Uh, Usually you can use uh, your uh, lamp from phone to find the spot on this. Uh, yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. Uh, uh, if you uh, didn't pick, pick, pick up on that, uh, uh, like I say, uh, you can use a lamp on your mobile phone to precisely locate the positions uh, on the on the app, like so you can basically see pretty clear where is the center of your speaker and uh, where you can place your microphones. In the live sound uh, conditions, uh, engin touring engineers will you will uh, usually put a piece of tape on their favorite spot. So every time they get into new town and a new stage, uh, anybody who is doing the miking will just put the mic in that spot. So if you ever noticed in any concert, a uh, guitar cabinet with a <coughs> with a like square tape thing on it, that was that was done for that reason. Now I would like to talk uh, a bit more. Of course, guys, if you have any questions. Feel free to stop me, because I kind of prepared uh, this little speech today 
so I can be more concise and not wander around uh, uh, too much with topics. Uh, feel free to post in the in the chat in the YouTube. Uh, and also, I think we are live in several places in, in Facebook. I will need to get uh, the hand of this better. But for now, let's just chat in uh, in uh, in YouTube if possible. Uh, so now uh, I would like to talk about uh, condenser microphones. This is a large diaphragm uh, condenser microphone from Sennheiser. It's uh, MK4. I'm trying to put it as close as I can to the camera so you guys can see it. Of course. Uh, later on, I will post an article on our website with images of these things and pretty much transcript of short version of transcript of everything that I've been saying here, so you can uh, review it later and uh, don't waste time going through like I don't know hour long <laughs> stream or something like that. Uh, so this is a large diaphragm uh, condenser mic microphone. Uh, the main difference between a condenser and dynamic microphones is, of course, the build. Uh, this one is using the uh, coil on the magnetic field, uh, and this one is using a, a capacitor or condenser. This is basically uh, uh, picking up the uh, uh, acoustic vibrations and turning them into electrical impulses. Most of these mics I mean, pretty much all condenser will require phantom power uh, 48 voltage in order to work because that condenser plate is electrified. And uh, uh, being, being uh, built like that, it means that they're much more sensitive than dynamic mics and uh, they will put out louder signals uh, for that matter. So you will, you will not need uh, to crank up the gain that that much when you're using one of these. But uh, for the a large diaphragm, uh, it's worth saying that it's, I think it's good for all sources. If you're looking, if you're looking to pretty much mic anything, you can use one of these. Uh, this type, especially, it will stand, uh, uh, stand and uh, uh, it will be able to withstand a uh, high SPL. Not most of them, but this type will. This is mostly used for uh, uh, drum overheads, and we are using this one a lot in live. So I think this this actual piece has seen many many festivals <laughs> and many drummers slamming underneath it. So uh, also, what is worth saying about large diaphragms is like it's it's like a faucet. If it's bigger, it will hear more. So. Uh, if you want to ca uh, capture specific things, like super specific part of the, I don't know, acoustic guitar, you you will probably want to use smaller diaphragm, because this thing will hear a lot of room, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things uh, around it. It's simply because it's bigger, and of course, uh, much of this will uh, depend on the uh, polar pattern of the microphone, but I will circle back to that. Uh, so, let's say we want to uh, mic an acoustic guitar, uh, we can use one of these, one of these, and just for comparison, I will mic the uh, uh, same acoustic guitar with a small diaphragm, so uh, we can uh, compare large versus small, so you guys can actually hear the difference. Uh, now I will try to set up Ah, Laka is already bringing uh, one of the stands. Uh, I will screw this on, and uh, maybe we can use just one more XLR, or the same XLR for the small diaphragm. Something like this. My stand is giving me a bit of a trouble, so I just need to tighten it real quick. I'll just set up the mixer. Just one second. 
in my head was, it sounds about right so basically this is a pure yeah like uh, maybe you can move a bit here because you're getting kind of out of the frame and I really want people to say maybe you can move to the other chair chair yeah that's gonna be better uh, this is like a textbook case of uh, miking the acoustic guitar around the 12th 12, 12 fret uh, we are using a, a larger diaphragm now and I will uh, stand up at some point and move microphone a bit just so you can see hear the difference like uh, when he's playing really close and we are and when we are capturing the room and then I will add a small diaphragm to this uh, mix so we can you can hear the difference between the small and the large side by side and also what happens when we mix those so okay i think we have one xlr there or yeah it's a small diaphragm yep and uh what i can uh, say while we're preparing this is Again, there is no absolute rule uh, on how to mic this type of instrument. Why? Uh, because, first of all, every guitar is basically different from the from the next one. Uh, on, if it's on the stand, is it? Nope. No. Uh, take a look below there. No, 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 below the table. Okay, uh, first guitar, every guitar is different from the next one, uh, and every guitar player is different, every room is different. Uh, so what I like to do is I will uh, have the guitar player start playing, and when he's playing I'll just move around the room, fire and close, and see, or I mean not see, obviously, hear uh, where are the sweet spots for that guitar sound and if I want to capture strumming or something more in detail I will place the microphone close to that region if I have the sweet spot let's say two meters away in the room where I have that really nice uh, guitar bottom I will place one more mic there and then blend all those signals together to, to liking so third one okay we are placing the small diaphragm now just so we can compare okay so now we have both small diaphragm and the big large diaphragm and let's hear the di large diaphragm first hear how rich is that sound you know you can see you can almost hear hear it uh, uh, re uh, reverberating with the room now if I if I uh, put it uh, back a bit okay <laughs> put in the small diaphragm too, nice and easy. Ok, 
Okay, now I hope you can hear this difference. Now let's play only a small diaphragm, just play. <laughs> Okay, let's try this so you can you can hear the actual difference because it's it's much clearer in my headphones and it's probably related to broadcasting trying to broadcast this thing over the internet honestly now let's hear the big diaphragm again <laughs> Play just a bit more. And this is the big one. That's the best that I can, that I can do, uh, really, because uh, it's pretty clear here that a uh, large diaphragm will uh, have more, uh, more of that sound in it, uh, especially uh, the, the bottom end, like just listen for that, for example, comparing to, to smaller diaphragm. Uh, but it's, it's also about setup. What we could do now is place the larger diaphragm on the bottom of the guitar and have that bottom and then have the smaller diaphragm somewhere around the top so uh, we can blend those but it's about uh, playing with both of both, both kinds of microphones uh, they're usually just like uh, let's just uh, try to sum it up if you want to have more room and more space between, use larger diaphragms. If you want to uh, have a string, string quartet, yeah, it, it should be richer in the lows because it hears much more room. You know, it, it, it's, it has the ability uh, to capture uh, uh, more sound. It's simple as that. If you want to uh, uh, mic a string quartet, let's say all of them at once, you will probably best off with using two large diaphragms, but if you want to mic them like individual, individually and let, if you have two violin players playing with uh, next to each other, you will uh, end up, you, you will get better sound with using small, small diaphragms on each of them because you will have much less bleed from the next player into that microphone because it's smaller and it's more focused on that only one player. What people do and uh, any any of those recordings in the sound, sound libraries that you have, you will notice that you have close microphones and far micro microphones. Those far mic microphones are usually large diaphragms, and uh, close microphones are usually small diaphragms. So that should that should sum it up. Uh, what's what is worth mentioning for the small diaphragms is 
they are often come uh, in pairs for stereo recording. Uh, so they're uh, particularly effective for creating accurate stereo image of real acoustic spaces. And uh, if you if you own any sort of Zoom or Tascam mo or portable recording device, you will notice two microphones on top. There's literally two diaphragms put like this. I will talk in one of the following episodes or in the blog, I will talk more about uh, stereo imaging and uh, uh, mic, mic placements for uh, capturing stereo spaces because I think that's that's uh, something that's a lot a lot better to do with actual <laughs> diagrams and images and things that I I don't know how to show you uh, when we're doing live things like this but uh, in essence I think those are uh, uh, types of microphones that you will encounter the most often uh, if I circle back to uh, dynamic microphones, I just saw them and I remembered. Uh, you will often see these. These are super uh, strong warriors of the dynamics. Uh, uh, us usually they're used for uh, large drums like kick drum. And uh, if you want to capture those super super low and loud things like we have one floor floor tom here we, we we will mic it a bit later just so you can guys so just so you guys can hear it um uh, uh, and we will demonstrate that a bit more uh what i wanted to say is and mention before i forget is uh ribbon microphones ribbon microphones are basically uh i think is the oldest type of the microphone uh it's basically uh, they have ultra thin ribbon, which is electroconductive, and it is suspended between the two poles of mag magnet to, that are used to generate the actual signal. Don't ever try to use uh, 48 voltage su power supply on those; you will blow you will blow them right away. Uh, they are specific specific for one reason: they produce uh, nearly perfect uh, ribbon. Uh, uh, figure of eight polar pattern and uh, they are renowned for their uh, warm and vintage sound so uh, they are uh, mostly used uh, in a way the, where you can when we, where, where you want to tame uh, like harsh high-end sounds like let's say in the guitar amp or drum overheads or in brass uh, but uh, in essence they are not, not so uh, wide in use anymore like they used to be. But they are worth mentioning as a, as a thing that uh, you should not uh, miss or uh, fail to know about. So uh, let's try and talk about uh, polar patterns a bit. I know I mentioned these a few times before, but uh, I want to just... Uh, direct your attention to the image that I'm about to show here. And there's a, there are like, let's say five most common uh, polar patterns that you will uh, encounter. Uh, first and most common is cardioid. And as you can see in this image that I'm showing here, uh, this is basically the microphone head. And this is what the microphone is hearing. Uh, so you will see that uh, uh, that this pattern is most sensitive at uh, uh, zero degrees and the least sensitive at eight, uh, 180 degrees. So uh, in short, it hears best uh, when you when you write in front of it. So most of these dynamic things and things that we sh we showed you today are actually cardioid uh, microphones. <coughs> That's the safest route that you can take if you want to capture. Uh, a sound from specific source without having any other sor source uh, meddle or interfere with your recording. Uh, next uh, pattern that I want to show here is the super cardioid. Uh, it's basically the same thing as the first one, uh, except uh, he's having uh, a bit uh, more sensitivity to the, to the uh, uh, other side of the microphone. 
uh, uh, it's, mo it's more directive than the cardioid uh, and having a bit more side and a bit less uh, real rejection thing. Uh, so it's uh, advantageous in live situations and allows for very high gain before feedback. Uh, you will see this pattern uh, coming up in many microphones that you, that you will use over time and it's really useful to know the difference between these two. So this one, this one will hear uh, more direct than this one and uh, have less of the, that rear end rejection. Next is the wide cardioid. It's the pretty, pretty uh, wide polar pattern and it's most suitable for using uh, when you want to record a group of instruments, let's say it's string quartet or for vocals. You can use this one for vocals. It will capture the vocal, it will capture the uh, <laughs> that complete head sound, you know. Uh, it's suitable for the vocal recordings that when you want to avoid, uh, or when you, when you want to have uh, that little proximity effect. Uh, what pro proximity effect is, is basically a phenomenon that leads to increase in low frequencies when you're coming close to the microphone. So uh, these uh, wide cardioid patterns will really win at that. Uh, next one that I want to mention is the figure of eight. Uh, the name tells it all. It will hear almost equally on the front and the back side, but pretty much nothing from the sides. Uh, it has pretty much highest side re rejection of all polar patterns. And it's uh, super uh, uh, cool when you're recording uh, live stuff and you have many instruments in the same room at the same time and you really want to, to have that natural instrument sound but on the same, same time avoid that bleed from the sides. And the uh, uh, final one is the omnidirectional and you can see by the polar pattern uh, it will pretty much hear uh, you, you hear or have the same sensitivity to sound pressure to sound pressure from uh, every direction. Uh, it will shine uh, in the in the uh, good sounding rooms and in the stereo recordings, but uh, you really need to have that super good sounding room. Uh, otherwise, otherwise. Uh, Otherwise, uh, it it will capture things that you really don't want to see or hear in your in your recording. Uh, basically, uh, use the omnis in the, only if you have super controlled environment or super nice sounding studio studio room. Uh, that's the like shortest version that I can give you about uh, polar patterns. What we can do now is uh, show you uh, a bit more uh, about uh, dynamic, the dynamic microphones, about use, common use. Uh, maybe this warrior will meet that floor tom. Just so you can hear the bl similar blends that we had uh, with a large diaphragm condenser versus a smaller diaphragm condenser. We will basically do uh, something similar but with dynamics. And yeah, I got to the report that uh, for some reason our YouTube uh, stream has ended and YouTube is pretty much uh, now resuming to, to show things that I do, uh, but I will try to, to generate a new link for people to see. I don't know why that happened, but for some reason it did. While well, guys set up uh, the uh, microphones, uh, I can try and work on that and include people who were with us before. For some reason, YouTube is having uh, trouble keeping up with us. Yep. Oh, 
<laughs> Remember, that's going to sound nice. <laughs> yeah, I think we yeah, used this one just happened. the other day. Uh, to record those new samples for for uh, Yatakuna's uh, drumming library. Ah, you guys got it in already, right? Let me just post these links for people. No, I mean, really, it's like YouTube is hating us, obviously. Okay, we'll just give up on them. Fuck them. Okay. Uh, let's just do a bit of that. Oh, see. Okay. No, I stopped the YouTube thing. I mean, for some reason it's not working. And I really don't want to, to waste time now trying to fix that. I really don't care. Uh, okay, let's give it a punch so I can hear what hap what's happening. Okay, one more. Okay. Hope that you heard that and this huge ass <laughs> uh, uh, percussive sound. So uh, this is the this is a uh, mm, this this floor tone is now mic'd with a is now mic'd with a, a Beta 52 Shore, which is uh, most commonly used uh, in uh, uh, micing uh, kick drums. But also, what I like to do, I like to take this one and put it on the bottom of the floor, to, floor tom and uh, use 57 or 421 on, on top. But uh, because uh, this will pick up more of that low end, but uh, 57 or 421 will give that really nice slap, sl uh, slap. So when you blend those two, you get really sweet sound. Uh, it's the same reason uh, when, I, when, we, when I'm making the kick drum, I like to have this one, uh, which is uh, D112 uh, AKG uh, in the cent dead center of the kick drum and this one on the outside because then I can have that really nice snap from the pedal picked up by this one and a uh, really nice low bottom end uh, picked up by this one. So, uh, 
that's the that's the pretty much uh, uh, the gist of it. So just to recap, you will have your dynamics, your condensers, and your ribbon microphones. Uh, in the, the condenser microphones, you will have your large diaphragms and small diaphragms. Uh, in your uh, dynamics, you will have uh, all types of uh, all types of uh, different uh, instrumentation uh, applications for like uh, vocals and instruments and drums. Uh, and uh, seeing that we're having troubles, real real troubles now with uh, pretty much all streams, as far as I can see, uh, I think the best thing for us to do is pretty much to wrap this uh, thing up and then I will just try and make a proper recorded video of everything that we strive to say today and for some reason failed because fucking YouTube disconnected us uh, and uh, maybe I'll try and post that during the next week and just tag you all to uh, uh, in the in the post so you can catch up I'll try to make more more concise and uh, version of all this include some documentation and some PDFs for you to read of course, some images, uh, as always, uh, for the future uh, live streams that I'm hoping that we will be doing in the big studio, uh, go to our website, borasaudio.com uh, slash streams. Uh, you can sign up there and get notified on time. You can, of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel and oh, why, not, why not like our, our pages. Uh, of course, if you have any questions, just send us a message through our Facebook page or through our contact section uh, in our website. We are more than happy to answer any question.